last night, Max Scherzer took aim at Miami. And the Marlins took down the Nationals ace. Next up, Jordan Zimmerman. The Marlins try to take another bite out of Washington's playoff hopes. It's Miami and the Nationals, and it's next. Capital tonight, big crowd expected at Nationals Park. Weekend series, Fish and Nationals, and many in the big crowd starting to grow concern. The Nationals, six and a half back in the East. Hi, everybody, Rich Waltz, along with Tommy Hutton, and the Marlins beat them last night, beat their ace, Max Scherzer. They did it with the long ball, including one from Marcelo Zuna. Rich, they did it with the long ball. They did it with some aggressive swings, and I think they need to have the, the same attack against uh, the pitcher tonight in Jordan Zimmerman. Great attacking by Marcelo Zuna. Three-game hitting streak right now. Six for 12. Had a terrific series against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Last five games, he's eight for 20. How about since his return? He's in his form of 23 home runs and 85 RBIs of last year. Starting pitchers for tonight. Now you talked about Zimmerman going. Marlins have a history with him. Tom Kohler uh, back here at Nationals Park. That's the matchup for tonight. Yeah, Tom Kohler goes against his ball club. He has been solid all year. 18 of 24 starts, six or more innings. There's a guy that's always taken the ball, never been on the disabled list. Jordan Zimmerman, they're each 29 years old. Zimmerman's had three starts against the Marlins this year, two no decisions and a loss. Attack, attack, attack. He throws a lot of strikes. These two teams have played ten times. Miami's won six. They'd love to make it seven. Love to take another bite out of those postseason hopes. It's Miami and it's Washington. First pitch coming up. Jordan Zimmerman, D. Gordon, fastball, foul back, the count one and two. The start time of this game was listed at 7.05. Pitch of Penny just brought you that pitch. 
And they just announced the start time at 7.04. Well, we told you Zimmerman likes to work quickly and throw a lot of strikes. Well, he's thrown a pair of strikes so far, and he buries that breaking ball. And they count two and two. D. Gordon, Ichiro, Martin Prado against Jordan Zimmerman. Zimmerman 10 and 8 with an ERA right around three and a half. Gordon, of course, challenging for the batting title. Just a couple points behind Bryce Harper. Who's out in center field liner and Harper has to field it on a hop and D Gordon opens the night with a line drive hit. Miami's lineup brought to you by J.M. Lexus. You just saw D Gordon each rows in right Martin Prado's at third Derek Dietrich in the cleanup spot Justin Bohr hits fifth Marcelo Zuna in the sixth spot J.T. Real Muto hits seventh Danny Echeverria eighth Tom Kohler is in the nine position. You got D Gordon at 45 stolen bases. Each row at the plate. Zimmerman misses. He doesn't walk many, just 28 walks and 26 starts. Yeah, you see those numbers. He's allowed uh, a few home runs, though. That's hurt him lately. 17 home runs. That was the case, too, uh, last night, Rich, with Max Scherzer. Home run ball had bitten him a little bit, and Marlins got him a couple of times. Wilson Ramos is one of the better catch and throw guys in the National League. 32 percent is his caught stealing rate. Major League average in the mid 20s. And you can tell he's on high alert right now. Time call. Each row asking for time. It's amazing that for Jordan Zimmerman, this is his 21st career start against the Marlins. Runner goes, pitches a strike, throw down to second, and he's out. And that's what I meant by Wilson Ramos being a really good catch and throw guy. Yeah, you talked about his efficiency. Pretty good jump by D. Gordon, but just a perfect throw. Quick release and perfect throw, and it took all that to get D. Gordon. Tag applied by Danny Espinosa, the second baseman. Yeah, got that lead hand on the head first slide. Mitro fouls that one at the plate. And it is one and two. Yeah, the seven wins that Zimmerman has against the Marlins. The only team that he's won more games against the Mets. He has eight wins against the Mets. To his left, Espinosa crosses his body in time to get each row. Just like that, there are two outs. And here's the Nationals defense. Yeah, a couple of changes. It's brought to you by BMW. No change there. Clint Robinson starts. He's in left field. Harper and Worth. Only the third time Harper started in center. Only the second time Worth has started in right. Rendon, Desmond, Espinosa, Zimmerman around the infield. And we've already talked a little bit about Wilson Ramos. Martin Prado fouls it back. Prado last night, a creative night. Lined one into right field in the first inning. And then dropped the barrel on a low inside fastball and pumped it out to left for a two run homer. Yeah, and he did it against a guy he'd had success against, and the same applies with, with Jordan Zimmerman. 12 for 26. In his career against Zimmerman. You're good against Scherzer, good against Zimmerman. The fastball is away, and it's two and one. Ah. Two and two. Lots of fastballs when you face Jordan Zimmerman. A lot of times we'll talk about footwork with infielders. 
not too often with hitting. Look at the back foot of Prado with his first base hit as he slapped a pretty good pitch into right field. That back foot had to be a little more stable on the home run swing. And there it is. Zimmerman started towards the dugout and thought he had the strikeout. They count three and two. And that was just out. He got him there on a fastball. Miami has a hit, but Zimmerman sharp in the first. Let's go places by Auto Nation. Save on over 70,000 vehicles now. Visit us online at autonation.com. Sun setting on DC. Nationals Park all lit up on 80s night. Tom Kohler ready to go. Kohler looking for win number nine. Very steady this season. He's compiled 145 innings. And he goes at this Nationals ball club. Which comes in at 64 and 63. I think the one thing you you always appreciate about a guy like Tom Kohler he takes the ball every five days might be every six days. But when his turn comes up. He takes it goes to the mound. Jason Worth Anthony Rendon and Bryce Harper. And Kohler misses to Worth, who finds himself in the leadoff spot. And you can see in an injury filled year, just 56 games, it's not been a great year for Worth. Well, it's kind of interesting. It's his ninth start hitting leadoff, and it's also just his second start in right field with, with Michael Taylor banged up a little bit with Span out for the year. They've had to make some adjustments in the outfield. Fly ball the right. Ichiro is under it. And he makes the catch. All right, here's the Nationals. It's brought to you by J.M. Lexus. Worth the leadoff spot. Anthony Rendon hits second. Bryce Harper against Tom Kohler. Remember, had a three homer day when they met in May in this ballpark. Ryan Zimmerman's at first. Clint Robinson gets a start in left. Ian Desmond, who homered last night, Wilson Ramos homered last night, Danny Espinosa is at second, and Jordan Zimmerman can swing it a bit in the nine spot. I think you have to approach this this lineup of the Nationals if you're Tom Kohler and you just say, okay, Bryce Harper's not going to beat me tonight. So depending on the situation, that depends on how you pitch to him. A ball and a strike. Harper waiting. 
It is 80s night. They gave out Nationals Rubik's Cubes tonight. And on the scoreboard, the national players, when they're introduced, are transposed into an 80s movie or television show. What a great movie, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> with with uh, some pretty good baseball scenes in it. Yeah, from Wrigley Field. Another pop up. That would be D. Gordon calling for it. And he makes the catch. There's two outs. Here's Miami's defense brought to you by BMW. All right. The Marlins played solid defense last night. There's Dietrich. There's Ozuna. There's Ichiro in the outfield. Prado, Echeverria, Gordon, and Justin Bohr. JT Real Muto. A lot of fans here for Justin Bohr. Saw him around the batting cage talking to friends and family. Career numbers against Tom Kohler. You can see. It wasn't just that one day where he hit three home runs, but he's had success. And you would think a guy like Kohler, and we've seen it in Kohler's career, relishes the chance to get back in there against him. Well, without question, he's a competitor, so he wants to prove this time in this matchup, in this game tonight, he has the upper hand. Fastball at the knees. And it's 0 2. There's your home run leaders, Harper at 31. Giancarlo still hanging in there at 27. And the Marlins are hopeful that uh, maybe by the end of the coming week, that Stanton is back on the field in uniform and in right field. Possibly uh, over the weekend when the Mets are in town. Marlins open up that homestand. Mets. Brewers and the Nationals again. Yeah, the Marlins and the Nationals still have two more series to go. The series in Miami and then right back here a four game series in the middle of September. Where will Matt Williams ball club be at that point. Here's a 2 2. Got him. Breaking ball. Nice job by Kohler. He strikes out Harper and goes one, two, three through the Nationals in the first. Underway and scoreless. See, 2016 All Star Game trip. You can be eligible for a chance to win that. That's in San Diego. Other incredible prizes if you renew for 2016 with a Marlins season ticket plan. 1877 Marlins or go to Marlins.com. Jordan Zimmerman gets Derek Dietrich, Justin Bohr, Marcel Ozuna. Breaking ball for a strike. Here's the scout. 
you know what over the years we've done this a lot with Zimmerman the, the no hitter certainly he is another ace. And you think about it Scherzer Zimmerman Strasburg. And he's got three quality pitches. Marlin saw him throw a few more breaking balls his last time out. Dietrich fouls it back to the screen. Dietrich's homered off Zimmerman, two for nine with a home run. One thing you, you hear Derek Dietrich talk about his approach. He knows pitchers are going to adjust and he's going to see a lot more breaking balls because there are not too many fastballs that he misses. Dietrich steps out. Zimmerman, of course, the uh, no hitter on the last day of the regular season last year. The other principal figure in that game was Steven Souza Jr., who made the diving catch for the last out, robbing Christian Yelich of a hit and securing the no hitter. The, the irony there is Steven Souza Jr. was the trade chip that the Nationals shipped in the three team deal that brought them Trey Turner and Joe Ross. Not a bad deal. That's a good deal for the Nationals. Oh, it's a great deal for the Nationals. Especially watching a Turner and his quick rise up to the big leagues. Trey Turner, a guest with Jessica Blaylock on Marlins Live, talking about his Florida roots, talking about growing up watching the Marlins on television. We'll have a, a piece of that later. One of the greatest things I heard about Turner was from uh, Vice President of Player Development for the Nationals, Bob Boone, terrific catcher in his own right. And he said Trey Turner, when he saw him in the minor leagues, reminded him of an Alan Trammell with more speed. A lot of speed. A lot more speed. Dietrich, a terrific at bat, and he works the walk, the leadoff walk. There'll be a brief ceremony behind home plate because Zimmerman just doesn't walk people. Look at that. At and, and he probably realistically didn't walk Dietrich. <laughs> but Dietrich will take it. Yeah, he does not walk very many. Kind of the the usual suspects on that list. And you saw Scherzer on that list second. And so a lot of what the Marlins did offensively last night early attack. Scherzer is a guy just like Zimmerman likes to attack early get strike one strike two. And the Marlins were. In that same mode last night, attacking, hunting for fastballs, and their pitch early in the count. I think you'll see Justin Bohr do that. Bohr also has homered off Zimmerman. D. Gordon was thrown out trying to steal back in the first. Dietrich, not a big lead. And Bohr hits a sharp ground ball to second. Espinosa gets one. Desmond's turn. In time to get the out. Good slide at second by Dietrich. Espinosa was able to just get out of the way. Yep, you just need a little luck sometimes this game. That ball was stung by Justin Gore. Hits it sharply, as sharp as you can, but right to Espinosa. And that's the one thing you like about Derek Dietrich. He plays this game hard. Nice hard slide. He can get the bag. So everything's legal about it. But a good job by Desmond to leap over him. Now Ozuna. We detailed Ozuna's night last night. The home run to straightaway center in the fourth. He doubled in the ninth. He's got a 2 0 pitch coming here.
Three and one. Zimmerman not as sharp control wise as we're used to seeing him. Yeah you don't usually see him get too many three ball counts. Twenty nine years old. Went with the slider on the three one. The count full at three and two. Certainly not a uh, big powerhouse of a college that he came out of. What you never heard of Wisconsin Stevens Point? Not until I started reading about Jordan Zimmerman. <laughs> Outside corner, Ozuna a step towards first and then a quick U turn back towards the dugout. Jordan Zimmerman strikes out Marcel Ozuna. Scoreless. bottom of the second well the Marlins have dealt with injuries all season long in particular when it comes to their pitching staff in fact take a look at the Marlins rotation on opening day compared to what it currently looks like you will see that Tom Kohler is the only guy that remains Henderson um, Alvarez underwent season ending shoulder injury or surgery for that injury back in July we know that Dan Heron and Matt Latos were both traded and Jared Cozart is currently in the midst of that rehab stint in Jupiter so guys Give Tom Kohler a lot of credit. He has not only been able to stay healthy, but he has tried to bring some stability to this rotation. Yeah, Jessica, it's a, a good illustration of what Miami's been up against this year. And Kohler's been very, very steady. He's been that way since the Marlins drafted him. That one is driven left center field and deep and gone. Ryan Zimmerman. That is uh, only the second hit Zimmerman's ever gotten off Tom Kohler. His first home run against Kohler. Number 12 on the year. He's had an RBI now in six consecutive games. Here's Clinton Robinson. Boy, middle of the play. You see JT reaching a little bit, but had a whole lot of the plate. Zimmerman doesn't miss many of those. Good change up down and in for a strike. No, he doesn't for Zimmerman, his 12th of the season. Robinson fouls it off his foot. Robinson getting the start in the left field. The Nationals still have a couple of guys banged up from the other night, not on the disabled list, but questionable whether they can come in and, and fully participate. Yunel Escobar and Michael Taylor.
Kohler with a breaking ball, and Robinson swings over it. Strikeout for Tom Kohler. All right, you can follow the Marlins social media and follow Fox Sports Florida on social media at Fox Marlins on Instagram and Twitter. Go behind the scenes. See embarrassing photos that Tommy posts. <laughs> Not of you, but of the crack staff. Oh. They well, let their guard down. They, they don't let their guard down very often. And you're talking about Michael Taylor. I saw him taking batting practice, and he looks close to being ready. And, uh, I'm sure he wants to get in there, the kid out of Westminster Academy in Fort Lauderdale. So I think he's close. We could see him tomorrow. His importance has really skyrocketed the last couple of days, and it has throughout the season. But with Denard's band being shut down for season ending hip surgery. Yeah, the, because with him in the lineup, he's in center field, and that eases things for Harper <laughs> and for Matt Williams. A swing and a miss, and Desmond goes after a Kohler breaking ball. So after the home run by Zimmerman, a pair of strikeouts. Yeah, it's always important, and certainly Tom Kohler doing it to, to make some good pitches after a home run, and he certainly has. Slider there gets uh, Desmond, so back to back strikeouts after the Zimmerman home run. Ramos homer to left over the Marlins bullpen yesterday. Kohler goes off speed and gets a strike. This is a Nationals team. Six and a half back in the East. The Mets, of course, the the leader right now in the division. But the Mets lost this afternoon. A three to one loss to the Red Sox. And that was much of the grumbling here last night. The Nationals going into last night had won four of their last five games, which is good, right? They lost ground in those five games. So last night, the Mets finally lost. And so did the Nationals. And that lead at six. To right, Ichiro got it with a leap. Ichiro gets to it, gets enough air, and brings it in. Nationals on the board first and lead at one nothing.
<laughs> little love from the dugout. On 80s night, this copyright telecast presented by the authority of the Marlins may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of the game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Marlins. I don't know, Tommy, which 80s character that was. But there's a lot of them around the ballpark tonight. A lot of fans have come dressed. We had the 80s cover band that was actually very, very good. The leg warmers. Boy, they kept us uh, entertained for about an hour. Eighties music between pitches and between innings. So I don't know if uh, Papel Bond would do it, but if he were to come in to a closing situation on a night like tonight, instead of his normal song, pick like go uh, for an eighties song, Sammy Hagar or yeah. something to that effect. Can't drive 55 <laughs> or in this town with this team. Red. I mean, isn't he the Red Rocker? We'll not hope it gets to that situation. Yeah, you're right. Rebuto takes in. That's three and two. JT's had 11 at bats against Zimmerman and is one for 11. Check swing on a good breaking ball. Ramos has it and throws him out. Another three ball count though for Zimmerman. We're just not used to seeing that. Well, and you can see 39 pitches and just one out here in the third inning. So that's why that pitch count's a little higher than normal. The guy who led the National League in wins a couple of years ago, 2013, <laughs> Zimmerman 19 and 9. I think that's Jose Lobaton. It's good luck, says Gio Gonzalez. Looks good on you. Now that is the Zimmerman you're used to seeing. Getting it out on the first uh, couple pitches of the at bat. He jams Echeverria. Man, you've seen the versatility too of Danny Espinosa, who played left field last night. Of course, Bruce Springsteen came up big in the 80s. Actually, came on the scene in the 70s. And still going strong here in 2015. It's interesting, and there's your a little Tommy Hutton throwback expo guy. That was one of your teammates, I think. <laughs> it's funny, every time we come to DC, a spin-off of the Expos, we, we always see some some Expos jerseys or Expos t-shirts or caps. At RFK, especially 2005, the first year in DC, there were a lot more of those Expos caps. There's your remembrance, and Tom Kohler pokes one into right field. A base hit for Kohler, two out single, it brings up D. Gordon. That could battle by Tom Kohler's third hit this year. Found that hole over on the right side. That's what happens sometimes. You know when Zimmerman's facing the pitcher in that situation, nobody on, two out. He's going to get you some fastballs. And Tom Kohler was ready for it. It's all those uh, sessions in the cage with Brett Butler. The pitchers, the starting pitchers, and the relievers go in and hit a lot. 
just before batting practice. D. Gordon now. Gordon rips one right field. That's hit deep over Worth's head. Kohler around second. Worth has to pick it off the wall. Kohler gets to third and holds there. D. Gordon drilling one to the base of the wall in right field. Two outs. Here comes Ichiro. Now, D. Gordon with his 19th double. Every once in a while you'll see him really turn on a pitch. So we're going back to that aggressive attack that the Marlins had against Scherzer. Same thing there. Terrific swing. D. Gordon tonight two for two helping his cause in that batting race. That jumps him up to 335. Up to date. We like that. He's ahead of Harper. Harper struck out and is only a bat tonight. Etro right now is mired in an 0 for 18 skid. And we saw Etro earlier this year have his longest 0 for in his career. I believe it was 24 25 it was in that range. Certainly on each of them. Here comes Kohler. Play at the plate, and he's out. Ramos to Zimmerman, and Kohler tagged out. We talked about it last night. That ball gets back to the catcher quickly. Zimmerman a terrific athlete gets to the plate quickly and is awaiting the slide of Tom Kohler and the Marlins third ends at the plate. DC. Marlins.com, one stop shop for breaking news, tickets, sweepstakes, merchandise, and more. Sign up for free Marlins email and text alerts. You can receive year round Marlin coverage, offers, discounts, and more. Well, this would be interesting. Tom Kohler not only had to race from first to third and then tried to score on a pitch that scooted by Wilson Ramos. He was thrown out at the plate. Now he's got to hustle back out and go after these Washington Nationals. He does get eight nine one in the order. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right, Rich. A little bit of a challenge. He hustled around. He got hustled up to first on his base hit, then went first to third on the D Gordon double, and then 
coming up the line trying to score. So got to get back into a good pitching mode. Threw the ball well after the uh, solo home run from Zimmerman. As far as the pace of play initiative and the clock between innings, whenever a catcher or a pitcher is involved in the last play of the inning, that clock is not a hard and fast time. So Kohler had as much time as he needed to collect himself in the dugout and get back out and warm up. Espinosa running up to bunt, fouls it. The count 0 and 1. Boy, the Tigers tried to stop the clock up in Toronto today. Blue Jays a 15 to 1 win. And a huge day for Edwin Encarnacion. First base, Bohr. And a base hit for Espinosa. Uh, he had just shown Bud. The Marlins didn't adjust, and he goes and does it again. He was determined to take this ball with him, and once Justin Bohr came in to field it, his speed got him by Bohr. He wasn't able to tag him, and he tried to flip, and nothing worked out. But a, a good butt by Danny Espinosa to start things. Edwin Encarnacion today. Three home runs, nine RBIs for the Blue Jays against the Tigers. That's all? Zimmerman trying to bunt and he gets a piece of it. On this 80s night, a lot of great music, a lot of great costumes, and up on the scoreboard, Jordan Zimmerman in Raiders of the Lost Ark, a little Indiana Jones look. The 0 1 pitch coming. A good bunt. Kohler drops it. Bohr throws it. And the Marlins don't get an out. Well, the first bunt was a challenge. This one turns into an adventure. Well, Zimmerman gets the ball down. Would have been out. If Tom Kohler is able to field this cleanly, doesn't quite get it in the webbing. By the time he goes back, a little bit too late. We talked about Jordan Zimmerman being a very good athlete, and he got up that line quickly. So now the work really sets in for Tom Kohler, and it all goes back to the previous half inning when he had to run the bases. And that may be one of the reasons Chuck Hernandez is out there to buy him some time. Try to calm everything down, catch your breath, reset, refocus, and go to work on the top of the order. Now, we saw that uh, photo of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Jessica today, Jessica Blaylock, our own, at uh, Nat Geo, National Geographic Museum, visited the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Exhibit. Jessica, how was the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark exhibit? It was unbelievable. It was actually, in fact, for all of the movies uh, about Indiana Jones. There were a bunch of props from each one of the movies. It was kind of an interactive tour where you could listen to different video clips about fact versus fiction. I took so many pictures, but just for the first three movies, because in my opinion, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull does not exist. But that's just one girl's opinion. <laughs> Very nice. Jess, I, I didn't even think you were old enough to remember Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, I love, I grew up with <laughs> Indiana Jones. I was always terrified of Temple of Doom. Last Crusade is my favorite one. 0-1 oh to Jason Worth, who looks like uh, he could have been in those movies. Well, that's a big assignment now for Tom Cole. Worth one for four last night with a double. He popped to right. His only at bat tonight. So it's Worth, Rendon, and Harper. 
Unless Kohler can induce a double play ball along the way. Count one and two. Kohler's last time out, he pitched well against Pittsburgh. Did not get a lot of support. Marlins lost that game five to two. Kohler gave up two runs in six innings. Little surprised at the scoring of the Zimmerman bunt as opposed to a sacrifice and then an error charge to Tom Kohler. They gave Zimmerman a bunt hit. On a hop, Prado out there, Gordon's turn. A Outstanding double play started by the pick by Prado, which is not an easy play. At his feet, hit hard. And the runners had to kind of pause for a half second because of the way that ball was hit. Picks the short hop and then has plenty of time because he got that ball so quickly. There you see the nice turn. You see how far away from the bag Zimmerman is. Because he paused for a moment because that ball was a semi line drive. Great job. That'll help you get out of jams. Now Rendon. Now the challenge is get Rendon and keep Harper from coming to the plate. Anthony Rendon's season has been cut short this year by injury. A quad strain that his second disabled list visit. Don't came so quickly through the system. That potent bat out of college, Rice University. Into right field, and the Nationals chase home another run. Boy, that's just good hitting by Anthony Rendon. Yeah, he was the college player of the year for Rice in 2010. I'm sure he got a lot of hits for Rice just like this. Out over the plate, that's off the plate. Look at that, that's not even a strike. That's how good a hitting that is for Rendon. And gives the Nationals their second run. Now Harper who struck out back in the first. Harper a one for three last night. D. Gordon for the moment on top in the batting race is two for two tonight. Coors Light brings you cold hard facts. On May 6th, the three homers against Tom Kohler, one of 27 players since 1990 to hit three homers in a game against the same pitcher. Sammy Sosa, the only one to do it twice. A couple of these were tape measure shots. Yeah, it's almost like each one was a little bit further. The 
was a weekday day game. In contrast, the uh, Encarnacion day today, the three home run game he had with nine RBIs against Detroit, were off three different pitchers. Outside of those three pitches, Kohler pitched well that day. If you just take away those three pitches, that accounted for four runs. He's had some good games. He had a, a terrific game against the Nationals back in April. Eight nothing win went uh, seven and a third shutout innings. Two balls, two strikes to the 22 year old sensation out of Las Vegas. Finally, I believe this year he has faced a pitcher younger than he. he yeah, had, I think it happened earlier in the year. He had not done that his entire professional career, even in the minors. Of course, we were talking last night about College of Southern Nevada and Mike Dunn and Bryce Harper. And Harper got there <laughs> younger than anybody. Remember, he left high school early, graduated. Well, it's amazing. He's in his fourth year, and he's 22. He's been rookie of the year. He's been an all-star three times. Gordon on the grass gets the out at first. Bryce Harper bounces out, but the Nationals add a run and lead it 2 0. The guy's on a cell phone. He's got the CB radio to make up for it. Breaker, breaker. All right. FL Data Strong fan, just hashtag it. And T Mobile will present the. <laughs> hard to concentrate when you see that. Yeah, it's uh, just hard to concentrate when you see that on 80s night, right? Ichiro lines it to right for a base hit. And Miami opens the fourth. Remember, Ichiro was at the plate with D. Gordon at second, Tom Kohler at third, and two outs. Jordan Zimmerman uncorked a wild pitch that went back to the screen. Ramos got there quickly, and Zimmerman is such a great athlete. He was a terrific wide receiver in high school. He was at the plate waiting 
for Kohler, and that was the third out. Oh, Zimmerman, the ball behind the mound, and Prado is across the bag. I don't know what it hit. It didn't seem to hit in a solid fashion. It kind of a glancing blow. It rolled back behind the mound. Matt Williams is out. Steve McCaddy is out, and rightfully so. They'll take a look at Zimmerman. Here's a look. Well, we'll get an idea of where this ball goes. Oh, it, hit his glove. it hits the glove as he's hitting the ground. But uh, that would be the good news for Nationals fans. And the Marlins back to back base hits here. Get things started. Now Dietrich with runners first and second. See the kind of competitor. Zimmerman is he was upset he didn't catch that ball make a play. Dietrich walked back in the second. Well, Miami right now has five hits but has not scored. They had Gordon. Thrown out trying to steal second in the first. Bohr bounced into a double play in the second. And then Kohler was thrown out at the plate in the third. As Tommy pointed out, the Red Sox beat the Mets three to one. Other significant score, aside from Edwin Encarnacion's line in the box score, St. Louis shut out the Giants six nothing. Boy, they got a strong game from Lance Lynn, seven shutout innings. Steven Piscotti, four for four. Wow. Dietrich swings and misses. And he strikes out. And he chased. I think you're going to see more pitchers do that with uh, Derek Dietrich once they get a couple of strikes on him, they'll either go up and, and try to get him to chase that high fastball or go down with the breaking ball out of the zone. And he'll make that adjustment. Now Bohr and he takes a fastball up. Bohr's ground ball was hit hard, but right at Espinosa, who started the 4 6 3 double play. Well, and Jordan Zimmerman, the, the thing they have, and he could be gone after this year because he, he's a free agent. They've got a guy who's given them 32 starts each of the last three years, he's averaged 200 innings. But with all the money they dished out to Max Scherzer, there's questions as to whether Zimmerman will be back. And the funny thing is, when he arrived on the scene, and we had a chance to call a lot of his, his rookie season games at the Marlins and the Nationals, he looked like a hey, a bulldog guy. He's going to be a, a good guy to give you 30 starts and 200 innings. Or pulls a ground ball. Zimmerman gets the out at first. It turns out he's been one of their best, if not their best, starter in this stretch of of Strasburg, now Scherzer, 
Gio Gonzalez. Zimmerman, an all star last year and in 2013. He's the, the winningest pitcher yes. in Nationals history. I know, and, and he's not, certainly not their sexiest name, their biggest name. But if he nor, walk, nor their most expensive name. Right, and if he <laughs> walks out the door, all of a sudden. The rotation takes a big hit if he walks out the door and if the other guy that you see in that picture Ian Desmond goes somewhere as a free agent they'll miss a couple of, of big pieces. Those are his career numbers against the Marlins. We told you this is start number 21 three complete games includes that no hitter. Look at that 97 strikeouts just the 20 walks so always a strike thrower. As it is, it's Marcelo Zuna with runners second and third. We've talked about the the improvements we've seen in Marcelo Zuna. Right now, working on a three-game hitting streak. Coming into to this game, eight for his last twenty. A 400 average in his last five games. Ozuna. Harper in right center. Miami leaves two and trails it by two. In their best 80s guard, Teddy has what appears to be a foreign object, some sort of ball or orb in his hand. And this is strange. Teddy doesn't win lots of races. And that music sounds like Pac Man, Tommy Hutton. How about that, Pac Man? It must have been a power pellet. <laughs> Come a long way. To the presidents, and they are out of the race. And Teddy's all alone. The winner's going to be Teddy. Ryan Zimmerman hit a power pellet to uh, left center field. A homer in the second. Yeah, Teddy doesn't. Teddy doesn't win a lot. No, only in the 80s does he win. 
Zimmerman takes outside. Zimmerman, Clint Robinson, Ian Desmond. Zimmerman opened the scoring. The homer to left is 12th of the season. Tom Kohler has given up four hits, gave up a run in the third as well. And a swing and a miss. They are having a lot of fun on 80s night here tonight. The band that they had playing before the game was terrific. The music that they've played throughout the night, what they've done with the scoreboard, even the font for the, the line score is in kind of Pac Man font. Echeverria across the diamond in time to get the out. And Zimmerman is out number one. That's the type of game Tom Kohler has to just keep telling himself he's he's in this game. It's just two nothing. He's made good pitches. Zimmerman took took him deep. The other run after a couple of bunts. You know nothing major. So he's thrown the ball well. He's made good pitches. No walks in the game. Got a nice double play turn behind him. Fuller with a breaking ball to Clint Robinson for strike one. Soft one, Hopper to Gordon. And two outs here in the fourth. South Florida Honda dealers get you ready for tomorrow afternoon's game. Jessica Blaylock will be hosting live. From the field here at Nationals Park, she'll explore DC baseball. Brad Hand, Steven Strasburg, your starters. A 1:30 game time, one o'clock for Marlins Live. And on a a night here, perfect night weather-wise. Last night was gorgeous. This one might even be better. We've had a couple of beautiful days here in the nation's capital. The Nationals and their fans know that. The Mets have lost. Boston beat them 3 1. Jacob DeGrom taking the loss. G. Machi got the save. Joe Kelly the win for Boston. But an opportunity for the Nationals to make up a game if they can beat the Marlins. They had that opportunity last night, but the Marlins beat the Nationals. There's your East reflecting that. Lost by the Mets. Up the middle, etch sliding. Whoa! That was almost an incredible play. As it was, it's incredible that he got it spun and fired to first and made it close. You know, most of your spectacular plays you see later on this evening are turned into outs, but this one could very well be one that you see later, even though it's not an out. How does he pop up? How does he get a throw off and make it close? Good job by Justin Bohr to get up and keep that ball, make a catch. Look at that. Unbelievable. It is. It really is unbelievable to watch. Ramos now. Ramos line to right. Fuller at 57 pitches. Runner goes, breaking ball low. Rio Mito's throw. Did he get him? He did. Gordon with a catch and tag. How about that? That's a terrific play by D. Gordon. We've talked about this middle infield. Adani Echevarria and D. Gordon. It just showed you why. Real Muto the throw. Catch it, hold it, tag it. Oh, wow. Had him by a lot.
Visit your South Florida Chevy dealers today and buy Checkers Epic Meals. Epic deals. Don't eat peanuts between innings. Never a good idea. No. <laughs> Unfold that tongue. Here we go. Nationals 2 nothing over the Marlins in the fifth. And to top off that throw, how about the throw of JT Real Muto? It is a great tag, catch and tag by D. Gordon. But you can't do it if you don't get that throw in time. And it was quite a sequence. First, the Echeverria near spectacular play. Desmond beating that out at first. And then Gordon's catch and tag out into center field. Harper just shy of the track. Here's that sequence. This is Etch first. Wow. Rand I vision cam. He even liked it. And D. Gordon liked that tag. So did JT Real Muto. And it stayed in the glove. Nicely done. Echevria stands in. Gordon. A couple hitters away. Jessica Blaylock, you had a chance to talk to the pair about their defense. Yeah, that's right, Rich. Even before the start of the season, D. Gordon and Adani Echeverria were looking forward to playing defense together. They talked about it all throughout the course of spring training, and they have had so much fun working together defensively. D. Gordon actually told me that he's more excited to see Etch make a play than himself, and he's so confident in Etch's abilities that he'll say that a boy Etch before he even releases the ball. And guys, we just saw it. Maybe Etch didn't get the out uh, back in that in the bottom of the inning, but boy. Unbelievable play and effort by both of those guys defensively night in and night out. Yeah, fun to watch. And certainly both will be candidates for the uh, gold glove. I think the fielding Bible will probably be uh, within reach as well. At least they'll be in competition for it. And that's what makes you feel good about this club when you look ahead. You've got solid up the middle. We've talked about it. Marcelo Zuna. When he's on his game and he appears to be back in form, you've got real Muto, you've got the corner outfielders, you've got the veteran Prado. So there, there are many, many good things to see in this ball club. Liner to right worth. I think we've seen Echeverria grow each year as a hitter as well. Yeah, Etch is, uh, you know, was up around 300, has been right around 280 for the last uh, month, month and a half. Here's Tom Kohler. Bowler a base hit in the third. Zimmerman, by the way, Rich is working about as fast as Johnny Gomes worked last yeah. night for the Braves. Johnny Gomes last night in an emergency. Tom Kohler, ladies and gentlemen, is two for two. How about this? Another two strike hit for Kohler. He's two for two, and here comes D. Gordon, who was also two for two. I think the interesting thing about it, this Two strike base hit looked like a little slider as opposed to the fastball he hit 0 and 2 last time up. Took it right back up the middle. Two for two night for TK. Gordon fouls it at the plate. He a line drive to center in the first for a hit and then he doubled off the base of the wall in right over the head of Jason Worth in the third. That chased Kohler to third and remember Kohler was thrown out on the pitch that went to the screen. During the each row at bat. I'm sure Kohler's wife Ashley approving of his hitting. Absolutely. He was a standout softball player. at Stony Brook.
We had some Michael Jackson, now some Prince on 80s night. D. Gordon with the two hits tonight, up to 160 now in the hit total. <laughs> there you go. Let's raise that ground ball wide at third. Now I think a, a nice touch would have been for the Nationals to turn back the clock themselves and dress up like they. Were in the 80s, which would be Expos. Expos look, yeah. By the way, the two hits tonight, Tom Kohler, first time in his career, he's had a multi hit game. There's your Expo buddy. Gordon lines that one to left. Robinson makes the catch. Miami leaves another and still trails it. Two nothing. In New York, DC United and the Red Bulls. 7 Eastern, Fox Sports 1. It's tomorrow night, and it's sponsored by Audi. Much better on that one. Although I think I like the whip around music better than the Soccer Sunday music. 2 0, Nationals on top. I'm still into the 80s music tonight, though. There's your guy right now. We haven't heard the Go Go's or the Bangles. Heard a little Joan Jett earlier. Steven Strasburg, Brad Hand tomorrow. It's a 1 30 start. So 1 o'clock, Jessica Blaylock live from Nationals Park. An Ichiro piece on what Ichiro means to his teammates and the influence he's had on them so far this season. Ichiro a base hit tonight, broken 0 for 18. Cola to work on Wilson Ramos. Danny Espinoza and Jordan Zimmerman will follow. Tom Kohler just wants to see his offense get him a little support. Trying to pick up his first win in a while. Last win was July 23rd in San Diego.
Into center field. That's a hit. The Marlins did not support Kohler in his last start. In fact, they didn't score him any runs in the six innings that he pitched against the Pirates. He gave up just the two runs and ended up losing the game. Seven hits and two runs in his six innings. Anytime you you do that, and we talked about his his quality starts. Uh, take it for for however you want that uh, statistic, but it at least tells you a starting pitcher is keeping your club in the game. Gordon pops up and gets the out. More defense. Espinosa is out. Gordon ranging far to his left. And here comes the pitcher Zimmerman. Here's the irony of the quality starts for Tom Kohler. Look at this play. Look at the acrobatic play. The dive. Ball kind of stays up. D. Gordon made that difficult play look really easy. There it is at full speed. But in the 15 quality starts that Tom Kohler's had, he's seven and six with a 176 earned run average. So that's really quality in terms of the ERA. Yes. And it reflects the fact he doesn't get a lot of run support. Absolutely. Two nothing Nationals here. Mets lost 3 1 to Boston. In the Central, we told you St. Louis won. They shut out the Giants in San Francisco. Pittsburgh is winning 3 1 against Colorado in Pittsburgh. Bottom four. The Pirates three and a half back at start of play. They need a win to keep three and a half back. Pirates, Rich, are kind of in that mode where you, you look at the box score and they're similar to St. Louis. It's somebody different every night. And tonight, so far, they've gotten a home run from the veteran, Ramos Ramirez. Cubs are in Los Angeles to take on the Dodgers. The Cubs have actually fallen back eight and a half. Well, the Cubs got Kershaw last night. Yeah, and it's actually with the win by St. Louis. It's nine right now. They'll need to win to stay eight and a half. And the amazing thing is, you see the Central, and you see how deep the, the Cubs are back now at nine. The Nationals are eight and a half behind the Cubs for that second wild card spot. Tapper out towards Echeverria on to first in time to get Zimmerman. So there's no wild card cushion here for the Nationals if they don't catch the Mets. At least it doesn't appear so. No, they have to uh, have their eyes set on on the division because they're not going to get to a, a wild card berth. And even though they're five out, you could say the same about the Giants or even the Dodgers if uh, the Giants were to catch the Dodgers. It looks like it would be tough for either of those teams to catch the Cubs. Runner at third is Wilson Ramos. Worth is 0 for 2. Bounced into a, a double play, a great double play started by Martin Prado. And he popped out to right. As you noted last night, one of the alarming things for Worth in years where he hasn't hit for average, he at least has kept a really nice on base percentage up. But even that's not happening this year. Just 285 on base and 319 with the slugging. And another pop up. Prado. Makes the catch and Worth is retired. Tom Kohler's 2 5. Miami trails at 2 0.
to lead it off with Martin Prado and Derek Dietrich to follow Jordan Zimmerman and Tom Kohler locked up here. Zimmerman a little unsteady out of the gates. The Marlins had opportunities. They had a runner thrown out at second in the first, one thrown out at the plate in the third. Stranded two runners in the fourth, stranded another in the fifth. So they've had chances, but Zimmerman in each case has been able to pitch his way out of it. In one case, field his way out of it. He was the guy that tagged Kohler out at the plate. Well, Tom Kohler has him in the pitch count. Zimmerman, you see there, has thrown 79. Tom Kohler, through his five, has thrown 69. Ichiro oh. takes breaking ball for a strike. A liner to right for Ichiro broke the 0 for 18. He bounced out in the first. And Zimmerman feeds him another breaking ball. Ichiro busy getting his work in, preparing for the game, didn't get a chance to see. The Japanese Little League team beat Mexico. It's a great game. Extra innings, one nothing win for Japan. They will play the team from Pennsylvania in the uh, finals. The team from Pennsylvania saw a great story on the the town in Pennsylvania they're from and, and how that town has rallied around them. I think the entire town was in uh, Williamsport. They had over 40,000 at that game today. Rendon makes the catch, and there's one out. Only way to guarantee access to the 2017 All-Star Game at Marlins Park is by placing a deposit for 2016 season tickets. Full season ticket plan start at just $499. 1-877-MARLINS or go to marlins.com. Martin Prado takes a strike. Prado hit a ball off the glove of Zimmerman. That was for an infield hit. It was one of those balls that sounded and by the swing looked like it should come off the bat harder than it did. And that may have in some ways helped save Zimmerman because he was in an awkward spot. He got his glove up and deflected it. Desmond just gets him. And we've seen Desmond over the years. He can get a little erratic with the throwing arm. Desmond has committed 23 errors this year. Do you think if he does move on, if he and Desmond ends up signing somewhere else as a free agent, does he play shortstop or does he end up playing third base or first base? I think a lot of it depends on what team it is. Uh, I was talking to some people today, and their speculation was because he's had tremendous success in uh, 20, 20, 30 games at Coors Field, over 300, his average, over 400 actually. And certainly the Rockies, the Tulowitzki moving on to Toronto, the Rockies looking for a shortstop. But I think it depend on where he goes. Desmond gets to that one and gets Dietrich. And Jordan Zimmerman is cruising now. Two nothing. Nationals.
in Washington, D.C., where the Nationals lead it two to nothing. Will Bryce Harper do up for the Nats this inning? And when it comes to Bryce Harper, not only is he one of the best power hitters in the National League, but he's also one of the best at getting on base. He is only the fourth player since 1998 to have an on-base percentage of 440 or better for each month of the season, joining Mark McGuire, Todd Helton, and Barry Bonds, who did it three years in a row. I had a chance to talk to Harper about his on-base success. He told me that for him, it's as simple as sticking to his routine. But guys, he is 0 for 2 tonight. He is Jason. Tom Kohler throws a strike to Anthony Rendon. We had the discussion last night about Harper and the MVP race. Breaking ball. Look, hot board goes back. He's not going to get it. And it lands behind him. Gordon picks it up. And when you talk about Harper, you talk about the MVP. It, it seems like there is a little bit of chatter that says, you know what, if the Nationals don't win, that's really going to hurt them because they're disappointment. But how can you lay any of that disappointment on Harper's performance, which without a lot of protection in front or behind, he's leading the universe in OPS, leads in slugging, leads in on base. You just talked about the on base. He's on base 460 coming in. It's, it's, it's a, a matter of that he's leading in so many categories it would be hard to discount him because they're not the first place team and if they fall out of the race well Harper tonight an 0 for 2 A little top gun look Well, and you think about it. Think about some of the other candidates that we've talked about. Harper's team closer than Goldschmidt's team. I saw an interesting argument for Buster Posey. Buster Posey, yeah, I read the same thing. All of a sudden, he's coming into play. Anthony Rizzo is getting a little play. Andrew McCutcheon, you can never discount him. Certainly had that big day against Kohler on May 6th with the three home runs. Tonight, Kohler a strikeout in the first, a grounder to second in the third. And on the runner at first. He's made some good pitches. His, his breaking ball has been there in his approach to Harper tonight. A lot of guys wear that uh, ankle guard. Saw that Harper has around the ankle. He has it more up on the shin, trying to protect that area. Good pitch, Kohler. That spiked curve that he just digs in with the index finger. Snaps it off. Yeah, that was the pitch I was talking about. He's made some good pitches with that particular. Look at he spikes it, drops it down and in. Not many left-handers going to hit that. And even got Harper, who's been pretty patient this year, to go out of the zone. That tells you the action of it. Harper's not pleased at himself. Watch out. Watch out. Boy, as many times as you see a bat splinter and fly off. Was it Troy Tillowitzki who cut his hand? I want to say about six, seven years ago, put himself on the disabled list for a, a good deal of time. Now you know what? If he didn't, he's okay. But if he injures himself doing something like that, he doesn't get my MVP vote. Oh okay. good. Thankfully he didn't. But and, and thankfully I don't have a vote, so. 
<laughs> That's a whole nother discussion. Yeah. <laughs> Etro in, Gordon out. And Etro calls him off and makes the catch. So Kohler's got a couple outs. We'll face Clint Robinson. And if you need to get to the ballpark, you got a lot of friends or co-workers or buddies or people you just met at your favorite establishment. 305-480-2523. Or you can email groups at Marlins.com and the Fan Express will take you to the ball game. Nationals Park. Tom Kohler. 79 pitches in. With two outs in the bottom of the sixth. Robinson and 0 for two nine. Lifts it deep. Left field. Dietrich at the wall. Gone. Boy, I was about to say he's made some good pitches to Robinson, who is a good fastball hitter with that curveball, with his breaking ball. But you have to show hitters other stuff too. You try to get ahead. Probably didn't locate that fastball where he wanted. And has to pay the price on an opposite field. Clint Robinson home run. This ball tails back, middle of the plate. It is warm in Washington, D.C., and the ball certainly flew out of here last night. That one to center. That's deep off the bat of Desmond. That's out of here. Way, way out of here. And the Nationals have clubbed three homers tonight. After hitting two last night. This is one of those innings too that everything's happening so fast it's a it's a rush to get somebody ready in the bullpen. Brian Ellington up in Miami's pen. A breaking ball and Desmond lost it. The Nationals go back to back and put some distance between themselves and Miami. Ramos is lined out and singled. Trope makes the catch inning over. Two more homers and three more runs. Five nothing Washington.
Very nice. I'm Good. grooving. Rich, I'm grooving. Good 80s music. Grooving to the 80s. 80s night here with Tommy Hutton, Jessica Blaylock, Rich Waltz with you. John Solsar, our producer. Christian Roberts, our critically acclaimed director tonight. Ken Lee, our graphics coordinator. Steve Cardamone in the world's most dangerous tape room. Back together just for this one weekend. Sort of an 80s reunion. Well, it is drilled. <laughs> Justin Bohr. Wow. Up into the upper tank in right center field. A laser beam homer that seemed to be climbing and climbing and was still going up, it looked like, when it found itself about five rows up into that upper deck. That is a big boy home run. Boy, it is third home run against the Nationals this year. It's the second home run against Jordan Zimmerman and an absolute no doubter. <laughs> Boar's reaction was immediate. Watch Boar. Look at that lower half power. 13th home run of the year. He, he joked around the batting cage. Said he left so many tickets tonight he was playing for free. <laughs> yeah, he gave him all a treat right there with that shot. Marcelo Zuna. Zimmerman misses up. Washington's bullpen is active. So the Marlins hit two homers last night. Prado and Ozuna. Bohr homers tonight. So three for the Marlins in this series. And two homers last night for the Nationals. Three tonight. Zimmerman gets the glove down and gets the out. Family celebration, networking event, fundraiser, all of those things, a, a good excuse to bring your group to a ball game. Come on out to Marlins Park, all you can eat seats, VIP group spots. And of course, the new Clevelander Sunday brunch with $5 mimosas, 1877-MARLINS. Go to marlins.com slash groups. Well, you saw those hands of Zimmerman on that pick. You know, the sharply hit ball by Ozuna. Talk about him being a terrific athlete. Great uh, high school wide receiver. Had over 300 yards one game in a high school game. Kind of a do or die. Pick it. He got it. And made the play. One and two to Real Muto. Little trickler out to Espinosa. The second out of the seventh. Echeverria. Then his average has slipped under 280. He fouls that one back. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see where Echeverria finishes. It's 
I don't think any shortstop has played more than Echeverria across baseball. And it's such such a demanding position. He plays it spectacularly. Covers so much ground. And you know, then you have to go up and you try to deal with your hitting. Game started. National League leaders. Echeverria has started 125 games. And there's no other shortstops in that bunch. Check swing at a high fastball. No swing. Dale Scott's down at first base. The only National League shortstop with more base hits. Then Echeverria is Johnny Peralta, the Cardinals. Strike three called. Zimmerman gives up a Justin Bohr homer. And that's it. The big man, local kid, makes good from the D.C. area. 5 1 Washington. Thursday, September 3rd, Jim Harbaugh, former Michigan quarterback, takes over as their head coach. And his debut is on the road against Utah and on the road on Fox Sports 1. It streams live on Fox Sports Go. Jim Harbaugh would be enjoying 80s night here tonight. Break dancing. Tommy Hutton used to do it a lot. Back in his uh, Expo and Blue Jay days. Well, this guy's great too. He's got a lot of moves. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Marlins go to their bullpen. Brian Ellington on, and he runs a fastball up, and misses away. Ellington appeared on the 24th against Pittsburgh. Gave up a run in an inning. You can see his initial voyage in the big leagues, appearance number 11. It's been a pretty good voyage, too. Going to be all probably for Jordan Zimmerman. Matt Dendecker has moved into the on deck circle for the Nats. Of course, with Espinosa, you remember there's Dendecker. The photo that Espinosa took on photo day. Certainly the talk of, of spring training because he had one of the all time mustaches going over the offseason. He kept it for photo day. Here's a one one. 
on the ground to Echeverria in time to get him. And tonight, they've been showing up on the scoreboard different players in 80s shows, movies. So a little Magnum P.I. Yeah, Magnum P.I., yeah. And that mustache wasn't one they just photoshopped in. That was the one that he was sporting to start spring training. That's on his photo in the media guy. Yeah. Now Den Decker. Well, Dan Decker called up when Denard Span, who it looks like is going to have hip surgery, when Span was placed on the disabled list. Span's out for the year. Another Westminster Academy guy from Fort Lauderdale. They've got two on They've this team. He's got something in common with Michael Taylor. Yeah. Went on to play at the University of Florida. Fifth round pick by the Mets back in 2010. Dan Decker, 28. Oh, look at that. Family ties. A very good family show. Alex Keaton, right? Mm -hmm. See the home runs right in the middle. Zimmerman, Robinson, Desmond's second homer of the series. All those coming against Tom Kohler. And Decker, hard shot, board to the bag for the second out. The right fielder. A Geico Marlins moment, 2007. Dontrell Willis extended his Marlins pitcher record. Home runs. To eight with a solo blast and a 4 3 loss to Atlanta. Boy, Dontrell would have some aggressive swings. He was fun. I, you know, he was fun to watch the pitch. There's no question about that. But he was fun to watch hit, too. Remember, a, uh, was it a two homer game against the Mets at Shea? And one of those homers blasted off the scoreboard in right. Nationals trying to get this guy going. If they're going to make a run at the Mets, you would think they need Jason Worth to start to start doing something. He's 0 for 3 here. He's 1 for 7 in the series. He's hitting 200. His on base is 273. Ellington yanks a fastball that misses away. But if you're in the school of one step at a time, the Nationals can take a step tonight because the Mets lost today. Washington can get within five and a half if they hold this 5 1 lead. That's really how they have to approach it. And they have to to hope and this is this is where when you have the starting staff that the Mets have you you don't insure yourself but you you really do help yourself of having that long losing streak. The, the Nationals would like to see the Mets do that but when you you could throw out a, a Harvey a DeGrom a center guard even the way Nice and Cologne are pitching. To me, that's the, the crazy part of this because the Nationals have that staff. <laughs> I mean, look, they, they, they ran out Scherzer last night, Zimmerman tonight, Strasburg goes. You got Gio Gonzalez, you had Fister in the rotation. Joe Ross is throwing well. So, I mean, to me, the ingredients are here. You know, the Nationals have some guys banged up, but everybody's got injuries. The Mets have had injuries. The Mets have been without David Wright the whole season, Michael Kadire most of the year. They've been without their uh, original closer. 
Heck, the Cardinals oh. just blew through South Florida, and they had four or five key guys. Adams. Holiday. Holiday. Wainwright. John Jay. We're missing one more. I know we got one more. There's one more Cardinal in us. That is strike three called. Down goes Rendon. Nice hitting by Ellington. 5-1 Nationals. Long ball. It continued with Clint Robinson going deep. Boy, Ian Desmond crushed that ball, his 17th of the year, center field. But maybe the longest and hardest hit one of all, Justin Bohr. So Justin Bohr for the big guy, number 13 on the year for him. Been that kind of night. Five runs. For the Nationals, just the one on the home run for the Marlins. D. Gordon with a couple of hits. Bryce Harper an 0 for 3. Matt Dendecker stays in the ball game. He's out in left field. And the veteran lefty Matt Thornton gets a pitch on the inside corner. Cole Gillespie for the Marlins to lead off the eighth. Thornton who had a really nice run with the White Sox. Misses away. Gillespie hitting in the nine spot. Tom Kohler two for two. With two base hits, and if you go back to his last start, he actually had an infield single in his last start. So Kohler has hits in three consecutive plate appearances, and the two hits tonight, first time in his career, he had a two hit game. I believe he was one for 36 going into that at bat in his last start. Thornton strikes out Gillespie. The other Cardinal I was searching for was Randall Gritchick. He's on the disabled list. He actually got hurt after we left there. That's why guys like uh, you look at their box scores. Guys like uh, Tommy Pham are doing a pretty good job. Stephen Piscotti.
Gordon takes out its one and one. D singled the first, doubled in the third. Line to left in the fifth. Outside the telecast, we were talking about the batting race and handicapping with uh, Harper just ahead of Gordon. Gordon has nudged ahead of him tonight. Harper 0 for 3, Gordon 2 for 3. Back to the mound. Thornton turns and gets the outs. Data Strong fan photo of the game. Hashtag it. FL Data Strong fan, and you could be just like Steve. Look at Steve. Steve's got those wacky Marlin glasses going. He does. He looks like he's ready to pinch hit, though. He does. He's old school, though. He's not using batting gloves, much like Justin Bohr or Bryce Harper. Thornton misses to each row. Tommy pointed out Harper may have an advantage over Gordon because he walks and has that great on base percentage. The advantage Gordon might have is bunting ability and maybe a speed down to first, though Harper's no slouch. Yeah, and Goldschmidt is third in the uh, in the league in on base percentage. So he'll he'll take the walks as well. Jordan and Itro at one time were teammates in Seattle. That one right under the glove of Zimmerman. Itro is aboard. It will, will probably be an error, although I'm sure they'll look at it. It's it is an error. It would have been a difficult play though. Because Zimmerman had wandered a little bit away from first base. It's only his fourth error this year. I mentioned last night he's done a pretty good job over there. But it doesn't get the glove down. And when you don't do that and the ball scoots, you usually don't make the play. Yeah, that would have been interesting to see who got to first ahead of the throw, whether it was Thornton or Ichiro. Gives Prado in a bat against the lefty. Where has it gone wrong for the Nationals? I think we pointed out some of it last night. The the, the injury to Rendon, and then they, because he was very productive last year. The the non-productiveness of Worth, Desmond, first half of the year really struggled. Zimmerman, Zimmerman. So you can point to three or four. Key offensive guys that they had hoped the drive in runs would be productive. And, and as we mentioned, the one constant is the guy they weren't sure if he was going to have a career year or not has been Bryce Harper. And the irony was the big move at the trading deadline was to add a closer, and that seemed to have mucked everything up because the because they were in a different position at that time. Yeah, they were. Prado. Out to center. Harper is there and he makes the catch. Washington has a 5 1 lead here, bottom eight. Front of a big crowd on a Saturday night in D.C.
one. Trey Turner is one of two Nationals players from South Florida. Here is Turner on what it was like last night to face the team he grew up with. It's different. I, I've gotten a chance to face the team that drafted me and traded me, and now I got a chance to face the uh, the team I grew up with loving. So um, it's different seeing them on the other side of the field, but it's a lot of fun. It's um, it lets me know kind of how far I've come and, and a lot of things I've had to do to kind of get here. And it's been, it's been a lot of fun, and I've enjoyed every second of it. And guys, I know you had an opportunity yesterday to meet Trey Turner. He came over and introduced himself. He said to listen to you guys call games growing up and then to finally meet you. That was a pretty cool experience for him. Yeah, it's a cool experience for us. Lake Worth native. And starred at North Carolina State. Andre Rienzo into the ball game. He takes over for Brian Ellington. Facing Bryce Harper, Ryan Zimmerman, and Clint Robinson. The Nationals have hit three home runs. Harper has not hit one of those. Which you almost expect him to be a part of. He's hit 31 this year. And he had three against Tom Kohler the last time they squared off in this ballpark. Back on May 6th. Kohler pitched well against Harper. But had trouble with Desmond, Robinson, and Zimmerman. They had two pitches in the strike zone. Toyota trend against the East this year. Not great at home, not great on the road. And of course, the Marlins will see the Nationals eight more times after tonight, including tomorrow afternoon. A series in Miami, and then a four gamer up here in D.C. the third week of September. Taylor. On deck, good to see him with a bat in his hand after that meeting with the wall the other day. He left a lasting impression. Taylor's made a nice impression at the big leagues this year. No, we're standing around the batting cage and Lenny Harris, Marlins uh, third base coach. Echeverria sets himself. Gordon turns it. That's a bullet of a double play. Making a good comparison, saying that uh, Michael Taylor, he kind of reminds me of a young Reggie Sanders. Oh, that is a good comparison. Here it is the other night. Oh. So I know national fans you can actually hear the nice salvation they gave him. So he's had the comparisons he's had the, the Reggie Sanders the Devon White a comparison. How about Michael Jackson. <laughs> you haven't heard that comparison. I haven't yet. heard that one. On to first in time. Heard a couple people from the bench yell, easy, easy. Hey, they want him around. To the ninth, Nationals up 5 1.
brought to you by your South Florida Honda dealers. 5-1. Nationals on top with a chance to cut that Met lead in the East down to five and a half. Jonathan Papelbon as a national. He arrived on the scene when the Nationals were in Miami. And he comes in here not in a safe situation but trying to lock it down in the ninth nonetheless. Derek Dietrich. Justin Bohr Marcel Ozuna. Patrick tonight a walk and an 0 for 2. Marlins seven hits. They had some opportunities early against Jordan Zimmerman. Got some help from his defense. Helped himself out defensively. And then just plain pitched better as the outing went along. You never know what's going to happen either that uh, they play at the plate. On the uh, wild pitch, Tom Kohler, the runner at third, trying to come in and score. Marlins had first and second, and nobody out in the fourth inning. And Zimmerman then retired the next three. To center, Harper. MLB. TV Premium. Get you all you need: real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking widget, every out-of-market regular season game, live or on demand, even in the postseason. MLB. TV Premium. Four blasted one. Up into the upper reaches that probably will measure in about 450-ish, especially with the trajectory and the exit speed. Dustin Bohr making his 71st start today. And that's not something I think anybody anticipated going into the year. You would think Boyle would get the bulk of the playing time at first from here on out. You know, you, you you look back to spring training, and the thought at that time was hoping to get Michael Morse, who had had some injury issues in his career. You were hoping to get Michael Morse 70 to 100 starts at first base. Flips that one foul. Papelbon this year, 21 saves, an ERA of under two. And is perfect this year in save opportunities. This not a save opportunity. But as many would say, it's interesting to note he's 21 of 21 when it comes down to a save. Four lifts that one in a shallow center. Checkers presents Marlins live. Craig Minervini, Preston Wilson. The Nationals blasting three home runs. Ryan Zimmerman's the first to go. I guess we could also say, Rich, it's uh, interesting to note that the uh, the Dodgers 
and Vince Scully made an announcement. Vince Scully will return for his 67th year calling Dodger games at the age of 88 next year. I would love to be a fly on the wall in those negotiations. Vince Scully walks in. Hi, Vin. Uh, are, are you thinking about coming back next year? Why, yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Do you, do you still want the year's supply of Farmer John's? Uh, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> All right, how much money do you want this year, Vin? And that's a short conversation, right? <laughs> Whatever Vin wants, Vin no, gets. I don't think there's a whole lot of negotiating. No, that's why I'm saying that would be interesting to hear. Count two and one. I think Vin just says, I'll have my people. Call your people. Three and one. Last night. Miami held on to beat the Nationals 4-3. It cost the Nationals a chance to jump within five and a half games of the Mets. Today the Mets lost again to the Red Sox. But the Nationals and their fans are poised to draw within five and a half. A strike away. Ozuna's chopper. Cut off by Rendon. And he gets the out on a high throw. Washington wins it, evens this series at a game apiece. Jordan Zimmerman beats the fish again. We'll wrap it up from D.C. after this.